I mean, can you just can you just think of like right now like a better story at running back? I don't know. Maybe there is, but I mean, coming off the Achilles injury, like this is. <laughs> This is He's, legit. Dante's the story that everyone wanted Cam Akers to be. You know what I mean? Which is, there. I think they have a lot of similarity in play style too. Both big, aggressive, violent backs. Um, but you know, one well, of them has been uh, highly successful, and the uh, and the other guy lost his job. So, well, here's um, what I noticed about that, right? And and it's, I mean, I've been a fan of guys like James Robinson, right? You know, Mo Ibrahim, right? I am, you know, a really big fan of players who may not be, you know, supreme athletes, but who have developed and learned a feel for the position. And I think that's how, that's why we're seeing four men here succeed because I, I don't think you could watch his tape and think like, he's not the prospect that he was coming out. Right. Like he was this, no. like, you know, people were like looking at him as like this plus plus athlete coming out. And I don't know. I mean, He's not, he's not a, I don't know that he was like a top end NFL athlete, but he was a really good athlete for college at least. And 235 pounds, man. You don't have, have to run that fast to be elite athleticism at that size. I think he ran like a four, five, eight or something. It wasn't that, wasn't even four, six. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I think what he's doing, um, you know, coming out here is, is, I mean, he, he's learned how to read. The offensive line, the defensive line, the play, yeah, and where to take it. And he's he's a physical runner. He's always been, and so he's been he's a you know he's taking that to to NFL defenses, and he did it last year too. You know, I had a I've had a lot of roster exposure to him because you know I paid attention. You know, when Henry went down last year, I had him in a league or two. Like started, you know, Foreman was one of those guys that I I put some waiver money into, and and he's kind of stuck on my rosters, and. I mean, he looked great taking over for Tennessee, right? Like d the same kind of stuff we're seeing right now for Carolina. And so by letting, you know, McCaffrey walk and, and opening that up, like it's it's a very different offense Carolina's running now. Like completely different than, than, you know, what McCaffrey would do for them. But you can't tell me like this doesn't, like this, I don't know. It's not a fun offense if you're like a big fan fan of like you know air raid passing game spread stuff but like i love this type of running i love this type of offense and i find it really fun and i love you know foreman's story and i think i think he's legit like he's gonna stick around a couple years for he deserved a starting spot this year and uh i think he deserves a starting spot next year wherever that's gonna be yeah so i, I think this game specifically was a lot of fun because atlanta has made a name for themselves this year, pushing guys around, like playing tough football. I mean, they've gotten four wins with an obviously subpar roster, um, and they're not throwing the ball um, because they've dominated the line of scrimmage. And then what we saw here in this game, I don't know if you're watching the same film as me, I mean, Carolina is winning at the line of scrimmage. Like they are blocking well. And Dante Foreman, like you said, he's making the right calls. He's not messing around. He doesn't sit in the backfield. He's he's getting one, you know, he's getting 0.5 yards or he's getting five yards. You know what I mean? But at least he's falling forward at the line of scrimmage. And, uh, you know, in this one, he didn't do a lot of getting hit early either. Like he, he, he's getting a couple of yards before contact and everyone, you know, and you love to see it. Um, I did dig into some secondary metrics for him and it, they weren't impressive. Um, so, you know, I, I, I don't know if it's, can we read too much into that with really talent level? What talent do you need to be successful role player as a running back in an NFL offense? You know, some of it was decent. Um, 2.0 yards after contact per attempt. Um, you know, that was, an, you know, 62nd in the NFL. Uh, juke rate, 25%, 42nd. Um, you know, but I, I, that's what the stats are telling us he is. Like a great RB2 for an NFL team, you know, like a good one and one and two down back that's going to grind out yards, fall into the end zone, and uh, get a job. But I mean, should he have a job? Well, I think, absolutely. I think um, is he going to be an RB one? Than, yeah, I think he's a little bit better than just you know the uh, first thing down kind of 
grinder. I mean, he's a singles and doubles hitter. And, you know, what I'd be really curious about is, uh, you know, rush success rate, right? Like how successful is he at getting what he needs for that play, right? Because, you know, I think he's probably, you know, and at least his impression that I get watching him, um, especially that Atlanta game, you know, that was pretty impressive. But like, is he getting, you know, what the offense expects? Because he isn't a breakaway guy, right? So like your yards after right. contact, your, you know, your breakaway rate, like that's not, it's not going to look good because he, he's not Tony Pollard, right? Like he's, he's not going to get like, you know, touched on the thigh and then like burst for 50 yards down the sideline. You know, he's, he's probably, you know, going to get like a shoulder to the side, you know, hip, but like break through that tackle and, and get an extra five yards. And it's just yeah, different, yeah. different runners, you know. I'm with you, and I, I wish I had the stat for success rate. I think Football Outsiders has it, but I don't know if they have it on a player level or just on a team level. But I, I think you're right. I think that's what we'd be looking at. Yeah, I, singles know. and doubles hitter, for sure. Right.